Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So this morning, um, we started out in the first service, and it's the first Sunday in October. How? Ten months, literally already. This year is fast. When did we start the year and we're already here? And we're, thank you, Jesus, indeed. Thank you, Lord. So the theme this month, our senior pastor has given us a theme called Endless Hope. Endless Hope, that's the theme for October. And it's going to be life transforming. Amen. Father, we thank you. I read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, 16 to 18. 16 to 18. And I'll first read the New King James Version. And then we'll read the message translation. Therefore, we do not lose hearts, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. Now I want us to read the message translation that's really going to drive home what we are talking about this morning. Endless hope. You will not lose hope in Jesus' name. Now it says, so we are not giving up. How could we even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making life new, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times the lavish celebration prepared for us. Now verse 18 says, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we cannot see now will last forever. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Endless hope. What you see it was, is what will give you hope or despair. So if you don't feel hopeful, change what you see. Hello? It says we should look at the things that are eternal. We shouldn't look at the things that are outward. We shouldn't look at the things that are falling apart, that are breaking down in our everyday world. We shouldn't look at those things that are, you know, being destroyed. But we should look at the word of God. We should look at what he has promised us. Is there anything God has promised you? Keep looking at it. Keep holding on to it. So it's unseen to others, but it is seen to you. You have to be sure that you are seeing that thing. Because if you are not looking at it and you are looking around at the world, discouragement might set in. But the Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. I want us to know that hope is something that we've, we may have overlooked over time, but it's powerful. Because the Bible talks about there abides faith, hope, and love. It says the greatest is love, yes, but hope is also important. And many times we talk about faith. Ah, I have faith. Ah, my faith, you know, I have faith for that thing. But how about hope? Hope seems very salient, but it's powerful. Hope is what makes you not to give up. Hope is, for me, is like that um, hanging there. So that you're, you know, you're hanging or you have an expectation. Okay, let me define hope. It says the expectation that things will eventually work out as we desire. And there's a Bible definition. There's good news for us as believers. Our hope is based on God's promises. And God can never lie. So we're operating at a higher dimension. When people get to a point of wanting to 
throw in the towel, give up on their life, call it quits. You know, want to commit suicide, kill themselves. I know that has to do with mental health, yes. But it's a point of feeling hopeless. It's a point of hopelessness. And I pray you will not get there. You will not know it in the name of Jesus. So hope keeps us alive. Hope keeps us aglow. Hope is expectation. And we shouldn't make light of it. Hope is even when you don't have faith. Bible says Abraham in Romans 4 hoped against hope that he would indeed be the father of nations that God promised him. But their faith was weak at some point in time, right? But they were still hopeful. Their faith was weak. Because his wife hatched a, a came up with this fantastic plan. Hello? Hey, this is not an excuse for the men to say, hmm, that gender. Because it's not time to bash each other. You see people on social media, I fear women. <laughs> Let's not go down that road. As for the women, I know they are positive additions to the life of people that are around them, right? So this is not, we are not bashing Sarah or taking anybody about. We are all human. But she came up with this plan to help God. <laughs> Hello. Something he had already told them about. He promised them. It's not that they just read it. It wasn't one of those general words in the Bible. He told them, you are going to have children. But it seemed to delay. Their faith was weak. They were hopeful. They were full of expectation. Hello? That is why they didn't kill themselves. That's why she didn't kill herself. That's why she didn't say, I will die. I don't have children. She didn't get to that point. Keep hope alive. Don't get to the point where you are without hope or in despair or despondent. Of course, they came up with this fantastic plan. Okay, the plan seemed to work because they birthed um, Ishmael. But God said, that word I give you, I am still bringing it to pass. Hang in there. Hello, tell your neighbor, hang in there. Don't lose hope. Christ in you is the hope of glory. You may not have a big faith. Your faith may be weak, but don't lose hope. Don't get to the place where you give up. That's why the message translation, I like it. Like it. it says, so we are not what? Giving up. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. How could we? Even though the outside doesn't look like it, things are falling apart, but on the inside, there is grace for a new life. Pay attention to your inside. What's going on inside you? What picture are you seeing? What stories are you telling yourself? Tell yourself a different story. Look at what God has put before you. He says, you're a mother of nations. Say, yes, sir, that will be, that's what will be. On the outside, it does not look like it. So do you choose to hold on to the outside or to the inside? So that hope is what you're looking at, that word on the inside. It keeps you aglow. It keeps you joyful. It keeps you hopeful and happy. It makes people to wonder how you are doing it. Hello? Yeah, because we know from the outside, we know your situation. But you smile because you are not looking at that. There's a different picture you are looking at that they cannot see. See your own sin, and I will see my own sin. See what he has shown you. Hello? He says you'll be a powerful, world-class businessman or business. Look at that word. Watch over it. Joseph watched over that word that the, God, that the Lord showed him. He saw it in a dream. He can, you cannot unsee what you have seen. Yes. He saw it. So he told his brothers. They tried to kill him so that they would kill the dream. He said, no, no. In fact, I saw another more powerful dream. <laughs> said, this guy, you cannot repent. I can't repent from what I have seen or from what he has told me. And so all through, it, through all the twists and turns of life, and you know he suffered, but that word still came to pass. I think he kept it alive in his heart. As long as he was alive, that word was alive. Yes. 
from the pit to the palace to prison and all of that. But still, he still came up on top. Ah, keep hope alive. And keep seeing that word you have been given. Create pictures of it in your mind. Because the outside sometimes doesn't match up with the inside. He didn't give up. He didn't throw out that word and say, this God is a liar. He said, I will be, I will, my brothers will bow to me. That means I'll be a great person. What is this? He stars. 11 stars. They were all stars. And then they, their own stars bowed to his star. Amen. What else did he see? Let's see how familiar we are with our Bible. Their sheaves bowed to his own. They were all great, but they didn't understand that they were great also. Hello? They didn't understand they were also stars and they were also great. But he saw that he was a greater star. Or at some point in time, he would be ahead of them. They were jealous. Did it not happen at the end of the day? In bowing, they bowed. <laughs> but they didn't know it was him. We are not even going to that story. I didn't preach this in the first service. Why am I preaching Joseph? It came into my mind. Maybe there's a Joseph here. You are coming out on top. Though they try to deal with you, you just keep praising him. Because you can't keep a praiser down. Put the praise on that word. You can't keep a praiser down. Or you want to attack a worshiper. You are in a long thing. How that person and God roll tight, you don't know. I don't even know where I'm going that road. I'm not going down that road. We're not threatening anybody. But how people... <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. How people do the intimacy with God, you don't know. It's the outside you see. Oh. We are all here shouting, dancing, we are praising God, we are jumping, doing selfies. This is... Um, what do they call it? The communal one. Corporate all together. Make sure you do the personal one. It's just you before God. That one nobody can enter. See how you are. Do you understand? In public, I see husband and wife, they hold hands, they peck, they kidney, but how they are doing the do, you cannot see it. So how me and God are doing the do, you cannot see it. You can't even talk about it. You cannot talk fully about it. So how he and God are doing there, all he knew, he had a word and that word conceived him, conceived in him. Let the word take root in you because you will have hope. There is a word that must drop in your heart. Read the Bible, yes, but there must be some that you know God has given you that are in you. You conceive and when you conceive, you will birth. It's a matter of time. Hello? Just as a woman will conceive seed and she will birth a child, we can conceive the word of God and it will manifest one day. You may not be able to put a time on it. Hello? Like for pregnancy of, you know, nine months. For elephants, I don't know how many years is it? Different species. But if you've received that word, you can go to the bank. You can go to sleep. Don't worry about it. It's that... Hope, it gives you hope. Some days you might be like, how long? I went through stuff. I mean, from time to time, don't we all have problems that we go through? Oh, sorry. Some super spiritual people here will say, don't say problems. Call it challenges. <laughs> so whether challenges or problems, all the same thing. We go through stuff that we're not expecting it could be in the course of our day or in the year or whatever, right? And they're like, ah, okay, it comes, it goes. But there are some that seem to be stubborn. Anybody had that type before? It's just there. You've prayed, this thing seems not to be going. And sometimes you get weary and you want to give up. Don't give up. What did I say? Don't what? Give up. Because it says we're not giving up. We're not giving up. There are two camps. Hope gives us staying power. But there are two camps. The never give up camp and the easily give up camp. Which one do you want to fall into? The never give up camp. 
You don't give up on something that is yours, except if it's not yours, except if the Lord did not give you that word or show you that this is what belongs to you. This is what I'm going to make of you. You are a mother of nations or you are a father of nations or you are this. Hold on to that word no matter how long it takes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 4, 19 to 21. I mentioned Abraham earlier on. Message translation says, Abraham did not focus on his impotence and say it's hopeless. But eventually he came through. Can you wait for 5, 10, 15, 20 years for the manifestation of what God has told you? Hmm, everybody's quiet. Can you wait? And he says, they that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. They will mount up with what? Wings as eagle. And they will run. They will not faint. They will walk. They will not be weary. See, they that what? Wait on the Lord. They will mount up. So as you are waiting for that promise, can you be mounting up? Can you be journeying with God? Can you be journeying in your relationship with God? And not faint as you are waiting. There is no virtue in giving up. Except if it's not yours. Except if you're already maybe in the wrong direction. And what you are claiming or what you are seeking to have is not what he promised you. Right? You cannot be... You can't be claiming someone else's spouse. And you say, ah, PN, I say, we should not give up. <laughs> Omo, you are on a long thing. Because that was not God's promise for you. It's not yours. On that, you are permitted to what? Give up. Because it wasn't yours. It wasn't yours in the first place. So I think I should try and put some balance here, right? Because some people are like, never give up, never. No, no. Don't give up on what God has promised you. Don't give up on what he has shown you oh, because of age, because of time, because of... So a man is here and you say, oh, I'm 52 and I'm not married. Ah, God, when? God, when? I know you were expecting me to say a, a woman. Okay, let me balance it. Yeah, there are men too that wait and are looking for the right person, right? A woman, you're in your 50s and you're like, I'm not married. But I know God promised me marriage. So wait. Hello? Wait. If he promised you, wait. It's not compulsory. Marriage is not compulsory, is it? It's not. It's not. It's not a passport for heaven. So people to issue, even stop looking down on the unmarried, like they sinned. Some people purely don't even desire to. Paul did not, and he preached, I mean, he wrote Corinthians, and we're reading it. Praise God. But well, maybe that's for another day when we're preaching on singles and married. Because, yes, I think sometimes we really idolize this thing to make the unmarried feel like they've committed some sin. And there are those who are widowed or widowers, and they did not kill their spouse. Hello? And they are back to single stage. And they want to remain single. I have a friend, she's a, she was a pastor and pastor's wife, and her husband passed many years ago. She's in her early 60s now. And no, it's not that friend that a lot of people know. It's my very close friend. It's not her. <laughs> that one just turned 60 last month. This one is in her early 60s, like 63 or 64. <laughs> Do you want to, are you interested? Are guys coming? She's like, no. And then someone told her, that, ah, there's one guy that's interested. She said that, have you told him that I'm a geo? <laughs> because she truly is not interested and it's from her heart and it is pure. Hello? Thank you, Jesus. So she used that to drive the person away. Tell him that I'm a geo. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you should think again. Can you wait for God's promise? Even if it seems to tarry. Hope 
will make you not to give up. Hope is expectation. Hope is hanging there. There's faith, there's hope, there's love. Ensure you are rooted in the love of God. When I go through challenges, this challenge I went through some time ago, I would say some time ago or some years ago, because it was kind of a prolonged thing. So it's not that one that, oh, okay, in a week it was gone. It was just there. I had to take root. I had to just encourage myself with the love of God because that's one thing I know God loves me. I'm not about to say, God, you don't love me again. You are wicked. I hung in there till it subsided, till it got better, till things. Anybody been there before? One challenge like that, just stop on. That thing is just... You hear people give testimony, yeah, this, once I was this, this has now gone. I thank God I'm not, you're like, God, I'm still here. Am I, you know, some challenges are just like that, refusing to, just there. Like Abraham's own, they what until they say, let's help God. <laughs> A little bit, because Sarah was like, my husband, you can still do me, I'm that nothing, flat, your own, that there's still... Then God waited till both of them, their bodies were dead. Then Isaac came, the promised child. Your promise is coming. And all glory will be to God. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank God for help. And we thank God for support. And we thank God for technology. Because God has given doctors, God has given people ideas, solutions to coming in contact with such and your miracle happening is still a miracle. Praise God. So don't say if it's a medical thing, don't say that PN said, don't help God. Going to the doctor is not, it is not not helping God. Praise God. It's still God's blessing. The woman with the issue of blood, what happened was that she had spent all. So it's not like she was waiting for the day Jesus will appear. She did go to doctors. But they had come to their wit's end. They could not help her but again. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, every stubborn problem, every challenge that has lasted beyond its time, it's time for a turnaround. We evict sicknesses. We ex evict depression. We evict despondency and despair. Someone may have gone down a dark hole. You've given up on hope. You felt so hopeless. Yet God loves you. We bring you out of that hole in the name of Jesus. We lift you out by the power of the Holy Spirit out of that dark hole. Begin to glow, begin to shine. Let hope be revived in your heart in the name of Jesus because God is good and you belong to him, not the enemy. We set the captives free. I caught every chain by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Every chain that has tied people to sadness Every chain that has tied people to despair. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Receive beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Because that's what the Lord says. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the garment of praise. Instead of heaviness. As long as you look at that problem, you will feel heavy. But as long as you look at the Lord and his word, you will feel lighter. Change your focus. Change your sight. In the name of Jesus, let hope arise in someone that has given up. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. He says, because we do not focus our attention on what is seen. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. We do not focus our attention on what is, but what is unseen, what is seen is temporary. That problem is temporary. 
it will go out of the way. Thank you, Jesus. Keep thanking God for breath in your nostrils. Keep thanking God for being alive. Keep thanking God that you even have a promise to hold on to. Don't keep saying, God, when, God, when, God, when. It will manifest. In the meantime, enjoy your relationship with him. Enjoy it. Father, we give you praise so that you don't give up. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Let your love fill our hearts again. I know there's difficulty out there. Some people to even feed. Zero, zero, one. Tea, zero, one. Tea means you drink tea. Then no afternoon meal. Then maybe dinner. Maybe that one is even Gary. Thank God for the Gary. I want us to know that we are ministers of hope. Not only us, not only us that hold the microphone. Say to your neighbor, I'm a minister of hope. You will give hope to others. Yes. Because your face, your countenance will spell hope. People may know what's going on around you. You don't have that job you've been searching for. You haven't got it. But like, why are you glowing like this? Like it's from the inside. I'm not looking at the outside. I'm looking at the inside. And the God is my Lord. And I'm just reveling in. And I'm taking one day at a time. So this is the attitude. When you wake up, say, ah, I woke up. Satan is in trouble because I'm going to put praise on my day. Not, uh, hey God, you check your email, uh, nothing, uh, no offer, no, uh, uh, that did that interview, they don't, uh, and then that defines your day. No, for believers, no, we don't operate like that. When we operate like that, that means we're baby Christians. We do not operate like that. You check, no email yet. Okay, it's coming. Father, I thank you. Because I know the letter is coming. It may not be today. It may be tomorrow. That is hope. That is expectation. And that makes a difference. Than being in despair. So it is the day that letter comes. You know, say, thank you, Lord. No, we thank him up front. We praise him up front. Friends, this is how to keep your mental health. This is how to be joyful. You can't be going by how the world dictates. If I go by that, I'll be sad every day. I'll be sad. Because yesterday I was watching the news. I said, ah, North Carolina, Asheville, Georgia State too was affected a bit. The flood is massive. 200 dead. I'm counting, but I know. I don't even want to talk much because that's a political thing in the U.S. separately, so I don't want to be in trouble. But it's more than that. Media, they always try to douse the thing. I wanted to tweet. My heart is with uh, the people of, ah, I just remember that, ah, I'm in Lagos, Nigeria. <laughs> for my people come for me, I say, hmm, did you tweet about the Maiduguri flood? <laughs> then someone will say, go and check her post. She already talked about it. I said, Lord, I just thank you. I just said a prayer. I don't have to post about it. That's what happens when you want to have compassion for the whole world. <laughs> You can be global or local. It doesn't matter. You can extend your light not only to your immediate vicinity, but to the part of the world. As a Christian, you are not permitted to be a hater. God's people are God's people all over the world. Hurt happens everywhere. I'm just trying to say it's not only Nigeria. So don't think our own is special. And even if it's special, then we have special miracle loading. There is pain from the left to the right, from the north to the east and the west of our world. Nations, even nations that you think, ah, they're doing well. There is pain because how do you explain? Everything is rosy and then suddenly hurricane. And people wake up their houses. Man. Don't say, hey, good for them. Why are you waiting on them? Why? There is no good for them. There is no need to. Some people, they're happy when other people join them in the misery they are going through. Uh, it doesn't pay. It's not those, that, that style doesn't work. Have compassion for people. So now back home to where we are now in Nigeria. Reach out to your brother, your sister. 
Look, if you are able to have three square meals, one, 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 should I tell you something? Mm, it might be too much. Oh, someone say, ah, yes. I'm not saying you'll be poor. You'll not be poor in Jesus' name. One, one, one. And somebody is doing zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. One, zero, zero. They eat once in two days. If you notice them, let your one, one, one become one, zero, one. And let somebody have zero, one, zero. Can we share? Some of, us, some of us, one, one, one is too much. I don't need that. Because I need to go down a bit. So I must eat meat, meat, meat. Now that I'm earning, at least my, the, the money I've been wanting to earn now, the promotion has come. Uh, eat. You must eat five meats. One, two, three, four, five. To show them that you have arrived. The meat they didn't give you when you were growing up, at least you did not die. Even daddy's in the house, leave the drumstick for the children. You don't need it. You are growing old, your bones are strong. The children need the protein. Give them the drumstick. You take the neck. <laughs> Let us be ministers of hope. I'm saying that to say this. Share. We are ministers of love, but we are ministers of hope. Let someone have hope. Let someone's day be brightened because of you. Look at someone's face in the office and say, why is so sad? The person is like, why will we not be sad? Are we not in this Nigeria together? <laughs> we are, but I'm looking at something else. Yeah. Let that light come back to someone's heart. And to some people need hope because people's hearts are fainting. They are they're in despair. That, where are we going in this country? Where are we going? As for me, I know I'm going in the right direction. No, I don't know where the country wants to go. But me, I'm going in the right direction. That's why you hear people say, in this economy, we, they are saying the right thing. In this economy, I will prosper. They are making that confession because they don't want to be part of the problem. Say to yourself, I'm a minister of hope. I will minister hope to others. Even when I don't have money to give them, I will give encouragement. Amen. Amen. But you have a little something too. It doesn't hurt. 1,000, 2,000, a little alert. Bang, someone just sees 500 and they're like, ah, thank you, Lord. At least I can be up your water today. Nothing is ever too small. Be a minister of hope. Christ in you the hope of glory. And that's what he has made up. And you will see. You will see miracles in your life. He will still come through. People are sharing testimonies. It will be your turn too. Yeah. But do you know that you are a living testimony? Because yes. you are breathing. And you are out there. And you are here. So let's give him a shout of praise. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for starting off with us endless hope the month of October and I know it will get better and better all through this month but thank you for sparking in us this hope and this faith thank you for reviving someone here just with this quick word we thank you because we know that we will see miracles but we thank you already for Jesus and we are grateful to know him I want to pray if there's anyone here that has not accepted Jesus into their hearts. Today is the day you're watching online or you're even here. And you're like, all oh, this Jesus, Jesus, is he real? They just talk. I want him to be real to you and I want you to have a relationship with him. So just put your hand on your chest or lift your hand up in surrender and pray this prayer after me and say, Dear God, I've been a sinner. I've gone my way and I'm sorry. Today I invite Jesus into my heart. Be my Lord. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. You died for me. You paid the price for my sins. Make me your own. In Jesus' name. Father, for those who prayed that prayer, we rejoice and we thank you, Lord for their salvation and I pray 
that they will stand and they will be rooted in you and they will grow in Jesus name Amen Daystar Raising Role Models